So where we last left off, we were putting together the structure of our project using jQuery Mobile. I put that into the network folder, and then so I got a copy of it onto my flash drive, and I put today's date. I like to work with a copy of the work so that then I can uh, keep a, a, an older version. So you can use yours or you can use mine. And I'm going to start with today's project. So we will again open the index .html file in Notepad++. To remind ourselves what it looked like, because it was a whole two days ago, mm -hmm. we can open up the, um, the project in any browser. I guess I went with Chrome at the moment. And I'm kind of also looking at it in the responsive mode, just for fun. And so there's the, the home page, there's home, there's art computers. I go to art. I go to computers. So we did all of this together. We created this collapsible element. We had seen it for the first time last time. Nothing really inside of it. That'll be filled in later. Then in computers, your last challenge was for you to create some uh, a, a list view widget. So I created one as well, but slightly different. I added a little bit to it, and I'll show you how I did it in the code. But obviously, from the example in jQuery Mobile, there was a little spot where you can copy and paste, and it would work. And this is a list view, but what I did was I turned inset to true. I didn't want it to go all the way to the edge. And this is just an, an aesthetic thing. If yours goes all the way to the edge, that's fine. I kind of like that it doesn't go all the way to the edge. I also put dividers here. My idea is that here I'm going to show some classes. My idea is I've got a couple of basic classes and a couple of advanced classes. So code-wise, if you're curious about that, it's not so much to do. If you got credited last time for doing some of the work, that's fine. That's all you needed. But here's how I did mine. I put it inside of a paragraph. Most of you did that. And then I put in unordered list, data role list view. Most of you did that. And here's a little difference, data inset true. So I don't want it to extend all the way to the edge. One way to prevent that is to do data inset true. Then I've got, uh, you saw simply then, okay, list items are each individual item in the list. But if you have a special list item that also has a data role of list divider and a role of heading, it does that. It makes one of these items stand out. So basic classes is not clickable, it's not an item, it just stands out to divide the data. I've got a class that I made up, COM 101 and 102. Then I've got another list item with a special attribute of list divider to show advanced classes. And then on advanced classes I've got the item of COM 201. So that's totally optional for you to do, but the result is that that the ones that have the extra list divider attribute look like that, a little nicer, I feel. They divide up the content. So that was that. Was that. Let's work on, uh, we'll back up to the art screen. And add a few more things to the art screen. So if I've got these green markers here in my default color, maybe I can find I can orient myself a little easier. I want to go to the art screen, the art section. So it'll be go to somewhere around line 65. It's inside of the article of your art section before article ends. There's a div there that is the whole collapsible element. Because div is a generic element and you lose track, what is this div, what is that div, you can give yourself a note there, a comment, to show that this is the end of the collapsible widget, if you want. Well, let's make a new line afterward. I want to use a new jQuery mobile widget or construct that will let me divide up my screen into columns and rows. 
this is the this is the uh, jQuery mobile grid. We can make rows and columns. Uh, we'll look at the official documentation in a moment, but I want to make a two column one row divider. So I want to make two columns. This will start off with a, as a plain old div. <coughs> Let's create the div pair. This needs a class, not a data role, but a class of UI grid A. So div class, div with a class of UI grid A. All right, so this is a class. This is a built-in jQuery mobile class of CSS. And this is going to define grid A. The default here is that it's going to be of two columns. If we wanted three columns, it would be B. If we wanted three columns, it would be C, etc. So we want two columns, grid A. It would have been nice if it had an intuitive kind of name, like div data role equals three columns or something but this is how it is. Each particular then row is made up of more divs of content and each one is a block. So we will do um, another div and right here we'll say row one column one. Just to kind of see something because without content inside of these things it's invisible. Well to fully have this set up it needs a grid indicator, and then it needs what particular cell of this are we in. So this div also needs a class of UI block A. I'll take that. So this, oops, not BUI, just UI. UI. So this uh, sets it up as the first cell in this first row, in this first column. After that div pair, we need another div. And I'll do here row one, column two. And that needs a class of UI dash block dash B. All of this, this first div, its pair, of course, we're saying it's going to be a grid, rows and columns, first cell, second cell, in the same row. If we wanted more, more rows, and uh, related to the columns, we have UI grid B, and then we'd have more. I always get this one backwards uh, sometimes. So this is related to the first column, second column. This is related to the first row. We have one row. We wanted two rows, div class B, and column A, column B, column C. It's not intuitive at all. But when we look at the documentation, it, it'll make a little more sense, hopefully. I'm going to save it. Let's take a quick look what it looks like in, in your browser, in the art screen at the end. It's invisible, so unless we put anything there, we wouldn't be able to see it. We got row one, column one, on the left and on the right. <coughs> To show you that we can have more uh, more of these elements, if you want to, what you can do is this: if you copy, if you copy the block A and the block B, 
and paste it after itself, and you'll have row 2, <coughs> column 1, and row 3, oops, row 2, column 2. I'll just copy the same thing. You can do this if you want. It doesn't matter. This all relates to the first row, second row. First column, second column. Column 1 is A and A, and column B and B. And that's just to show row 1, column 1, row 1, column 2, row 2, column 1, row 2, column 2. So that was just superfluous. You could either leave that there or delete it. Or if you set the content of the block as empty, nothing really shows up. And the reason you may want to set it as empty is you may want to use this grid elsewhere and don't want to retype it. So maybe you, you want to do that. We might use those grids elsewhere. So not putting anything in them. Keep them empty. The reason we're setting up rows and columns is I want to add two buttons. I want to add two buttons down on the bottom of the screen. The default is that the button takes up all of the space. It's a block level element. I want it to be an inline level element, and I also want it to be on the same row, nicely split apart and nicely aligned. So we're going to have a button instead of it simply saying row 1, column 1, we're going to say catalog. We want a link to the official college's catalog, a live link that goes over to the real website. A link then is going to be an A tag. It needs an href. We'll fill in that href in a moment. We have to go get it from the website but in order for this to behave like a real button, data role, button, data icon, we have one called bullets, like bullet points. So that's creating a button called catalog with an icon. It's going to go somewhere in a moment. What I also want to do is prepare uh, my second button. So on this row 1, column 2, <coughs> instead of it uh, being a placeholder text, we can change that. That's not a big deal there. And I'm judging if that closes. It's not a big deal if it kind of closes loud. Uh, we'll do here instead now, instead of row 1, column 2, this one is going to be uh, calendar. Inside of the app, we will display a kind of a calendar. This still needs to be a link to go somewhere. I'm putting the pound sign on those links. It's a dummy link. It doesn't go anywhere. But I want it to behave like a button. Data roll button. Data icon. We have a calendar. Mm -hmm. Just a little picture of a, of a calendar. So we'll go ahead and we'll type this, and then we will uh, run it. The buttons don't do anything yet, but I just want to make sure they work. I'll have a, a button on the left and a button on the right. That's because of the grid. The grid makes two columns in one row. Catalog button, calendar button. We'll make them go somewhere, <coughs> do something very soon. 
let's make sure that those buttons behave like we were expecting them. Check mine. In the art screen, catalog and calendar. So you see they, they don't take up all the way across the screen. I've got the divider there, catalog with bullets, and calendar with a simple calendar. We can make the catalog work pretty easily because we, we just need to get an address from the website. Um, I'll go look it up and then I'll show you. If we go to sdce.edu, choose a class. I'm just going to set it to go maybe to everything. And I'll copy that link. <clears throat> so I'll show you the link here. It is that. It's an external link, and usually what we would want to do is have a target blank to an external link. We won't at the moment because we know that eventually this is going to go inside of an app. And target blank is not that useful in that instance. We have other things that we can use, other Cordova code, when we get it back into our Cordova project, which will make it up, open up in a nice, in a much better way in the in-app browser we can open an instance of a web browser in our app. And we've seen that. You've probably seen that on plenty of other apps. You're in uh, Facebook or, or Instagram or whatever. You click a link, and inside of Instagram, a web browser opens up. It doesn't take you outside of the app to the main web browser. In the app itself, a web browser opens. We can't quite do that yet because it's not inside the Cordova project yet. So we'll get to that eventually. And for the moment, what we've got is catalog, click on that, it opens up in the same window which we'll fix later. This calendar at the moment what it'll do is it will open a, um, a side panel. Via jQuery mobile we can have a panel that comes into view side panel, left, right, whatever. So I want a panel on the side that will come into view, into view that'll have a list of uh, like art events, art shows and stuff. So our href will be set to um, the section that we're going to create inside of our project, its ID. We, it doesn't exist yet, so we're calling this art cal. We're gonna need to create some element with an ID of ArtCal. When we click on this calendar, it will open a side panel. I have the capital C there just because I'm used to putting the intercaps. Yes? So, I know. For the moment, it's going to be built into the app, and we're about to do it in a moment. Um, ideally, I would want that information in some database that I access from a server and pull it into the project, most likely through JSON format, which we'll talk about JSON format eventually. So for the moment, we'll make it really easy and just load it up that it's already ready. And then later on, we'll talk about importing data from elsewhere. Okay, so this means we need to create a brand new content area. 
we have an HTML5 tag for this. This is known as the aside. A-S-I-D-E, -E, aside. We kind of use that for the sidebar when we did the Marvel blog a while ago. Side content related to the main content. Same concept here. We have aside content. Content related to the art classes. That it's not its own, it's, it's not its own complete section. It's related to the current section. So the, the uh, jQuery mobile documentation says that if we use an aside, it should be part of the current section. And best practice, it says, is that it should be the first thing in a section. So let's back up to the beginning of our section of art, make a new line before the header, before the article, before the footer. We will create at approximately line 37, you know, inside the first thing inside of your section, and a side. It has a pair of tags. This is side content. It's kind of like the sidebar. But we don't have a space for a sidebar in an app. This will be a sidebar that swoops into view, that slides into view. A side panel. The aside needs a data role. A panel. And it needs an ID, an identifier, so that we can access it. What would our ID be? I think I, I think I heard someone say art cow, because that's the link that we have. That's that button that we're gonna click to show the side panel. Well, the the, the pound art cow. Right when we wrote down here, pound art cow. That means that's an ID. So we'll fill in some real content in a moment. Let's just type something. We, would, we, should, we just want to see it how, it, how it looks, how it works. We'll fill in the real content in a moment. So notice the idea. An aside for a side panel needs its own special data role. Panel. It needs an ID, as we've seen before. And then it can have any content, basically. So for the moment, type something like that, save it, and run it. see what it looks like. I'm going to save it. I'm going to run it. I'm going to go to the art screen. I'll click calendar. Sidebar. Real content goes here. I click outside of it. Slides back in. This kind of sidebar has three types of animations. I forget what this one is called, but this one's the default. Let's look at some of the other two animations. So we've got the aside um, data role panel ID. Before the ID of ArtCal, let's add a new attribute data dash display. So we've had data transition, data icon, data role. We've got data display. So this is how are we displaying this element. Let's put overlay. The, the default one that we did is one of them. Here's overlay. It'll be a side panel also, but it'll display the side panel in a slightly different way. You can then decide which is the way you like. Let's say data display overlay. The difference then is just cosmetic. If I open up that calendar, overlay is content that goes on top of what is already there. Subtly different. Notice, here's the one before. Here's the default. It pushes my current content out of the way to show what's below it. The one of overlay keeps my current content there and on top of it puts something there. And there's a third one. which I have to look up. I don't remember. <coughs> so that would be a good sidebar to go over to the jQuery mobile documentation. There's one more. Panel. 
files. Here we go, reveal. So push is the default, which is the default. Reveal is the default. In that the main content is pushed to the side. Overlay, we just saw that one. And then there's push. Actually, which is the default? The default value is at left, display attribute, reveal. So reveal is the default. If you don't set anything, it's reveal. In that below your main content is your is your side content, and then it's revealed. Your top content is moves out of way to reveal. Push is that everything moves over and the side content also moves in at the same time. And reveal, uh, and then overlay. We're seeing it goes on top. If you want it on the right side, we can put it on the right side. Notice they also change the color of things. How do you do that? You, you check your code and everything. So basically, you've got a panel, you've got an ID, and then you start to add other things. You can even do external panels. So content from outside the pages, dynamic content via JavaScript, and all that com <coughs> complexity positions, position absolute, position fixed, styling it. So you can look at that on your own. There's even in here uh, examples of making the panels responsive. So we can browse that. So we have push, we have reveal, and we have overlay. You can choose the one that you want. I'm going to keep it on overlay. And so the actual content that will go here, just put some basic content for the moment. Yes? Uh, just curious, how do we know that we need to have content that is a panel section in the check mobile? How would we know that we have this ability? Yes. Well, I think that the answer about that is in because I've been teaching this class a while, I kind of know where to guide us into what's popular, what's useful. But if if, I, if, if you didn't have an instructor to guide you to this, I would recommend you just browse all the documentation and, and read it step by step. I, I wish it was a little bit more set up like chapters, like do this, then do this, then do this. But the documentation, you know, it's all, it's all here. And when I've, as I set up the classes and, you know, improve upon them and all of that, I'm, I'm starting with what they have here, what you can do. And then I try to say, well, this will be useful and this will be something to teach and, and so forth. Like I don't cover everything like a table reflow and all of that or filterable. I like the filterable element a lot. We don't quite really always talk about it. You know, that does that. So basically it's, it's the extra piece about any programming class. You know, we go so far and then it's up to you. Hopefully you go a little bit further and keep, keep learning. Exploring. Exploring, yeah. People can learn so much by uh, reverse engineering what's already there or, or seeing what else can I do or just experimenting with it. The reason I ask is maybe I just thought that there's kind of a, some, some clue that, okay, about this uh, animation before this section, something mm -hmm. that more mm -hmm. on experience. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Well, like web pages, you kind of like set it for code by going into development tools. Mobile apps, there's really no... Exactly. Mobile apps, because they're they're protected inside of the app itself, and you can't really look at the code of the app. You can't quite learn from what someone else has done. But what I like about the jQuery website is that it practices what it preaches. The mobile jQuery mobile website itself is made out of jQuery mobile. So as I browse these different screens and I want to figure out how do I... You know, if you, if you go to the jQuery mobile site and look at that, it's got a breakpoint. How does the jQuery mobile site look on a tablet? Look at how their menu changes that way. Hey, that looks like a that looks like a side panel that we just made. So you can even browse the jQuery mobile code itself, and it uses the code that we use, and you can further figure things out. It's 
really are. Real life. All right, so that's the code there. Let's add a little bit more content. It's nothing too, nothing too crazy at the moment. Uh, let's create an H1 here. Because this aside is its own kind of world, its own section, we're OK by reusing the H tags. And here what I want to say is art calendar. The content that will start to display in the side panel will start off by saying art calendar. And then I'll have a couple of headings, simply like for some months. Let's say we wanted to display um, last month, this month, and next month of calendar information. Last month was uh, February. And then this month, um, March. Next month, April. I'll have some simple bullet points to show information here. In February, we had an unordered list. List item. So for the moment, I'll just put some bullet points. Real data will be added later. Hint, hint. And then uh, something in April and something in March. Just content. A little copy and paste will save us effort if what we typed, of course, was correct. Um, I know for myself a couple of times it happens that if I type something wrong and then I copy and paste it, I suddenly have three copies of something wrong. So make sure that your code is correct before you copy and paste. save and run that. Now you have some content in the sidebar and whatever you want to put in there, anything will work in there. I can put in uh, paragraphs and images and list items and and just about anything. Um, you just are, have to remember that you're constrained by the long tall column of the of this of the sidebar. You can even put other things in here. You can put in collapsible elements inside the sidebar. So I could have set it up, we could have set it up, but we have a collapsible set. February, March, and April are the, are the collapsible set names, and then inside of those we've got the actual content. These, of course, can then also be links to go show you other things. You have no limitation on that. I could create a whole new section called, you know, Section February Event 1. And in there, that's got a header and a content area with other content for more info. see what mine looks like. Go to art, go to calendar, it opens up. Now the default is that the H2s actually look bigger than the H1s. That would be something we can affect in CSS. We're still setting up structure, so eventually we'll do another pass at this with some CSS. I would like art calendar to be big or centered or whatever, and then uh, February, March, and April to be a little smaller. They're kind of maybe taking over. Uh, I would not want to change this by putting Art Calendar as H2 and February, March, and April as H1. I would not want to do that, but then we're using the wrong tag for the wrong task. The task of the H1 is to be the topmost element to, to define what everything else is below it. Visually, it doesn't look how I want. Visually, I can fix that through CSS. But conceptually, that's what I do want, H1s. 1H1 and multiple H2s or 3s if I want. On the default, 
on the default it is. For some reason, when the jQuery mobile team was developing this project, jQuery mobile, they thought that for whatever reason, if a person puts an H1 into an SI, let's style it a certain way. If a person puts an H2 in an SI, let's style it another way. Uh, for whatever reason, they thought, okay, the H2 should look bigger than the H1. I don't think so, usually. So we'd have to write some CSS pretty easily. Most likely, aside, override it. We'll write aside space H1, font size equals 200%, and then aside space H2, font size equals 150%. So we can override it later, but it would have been nice that it was correct the first time. But they decided for whatever reason that these are the sizes. All right, so our art screen looks okay. We're going to need to fill in more content later, but structurally, I've got a, a sidebar. I've got an external link. I've got some item for a class one, two, three that I can fill in later. I've got some a picture and some text. I want to align the te the picture and, and add uh, other styling later via CSS. Uh, let's move back over to the computer screen. The concept about what these learn computers screen is in contrast with the art screen just for showing different types of widgets the idea is eventually item 1 will be art 101 and we open art 101 and it'll have pictures or text or whatever regarding art 101 it's all here ready for the person to open in contrast what I want is that we'll have a list of possible classes here and a person will click and because the list view works differently than the collapsible I'm going to click on COM 101 and a whole new screen will appear of content. So we will make this an active link, COM 101, to go off into a whole new screen. Interface 2. Back when we designed our interfaces, we had an interface that's only going to have a header and content, not a nav bar and not a footer. And I want to use that interface to display information about each of these classes. Let's go find where we've got COM 101, and our app is not that long, but if we had a really long app, what I would recommend is get used to Control F to search for something and jump to it quickly. Instead of scrolling up and down to find something, I know I need to go to a place that's, that is COM 101. So I don't know, I was up on line, let's say I'm back on line one. I don't want to scroll, scroll, scroll and find. Get used to using Control F to bring up Find, and then type what you're trying to find. I'm trying to find COM 101. There's only one instance of that in my app at the moment, so that'll jump me to exactly where I need to be, no matter the line number. But in my case, line 126. I want to make this an active link to open up a brand new screen of content. A tag. <clears throat> it doesn't it doesn't matter. Go find what what class you, you made. Because we're we're trying to find the list view and whatever classes we made there. And he's an href. So I'm going to show in my computer's screen, I'm showing a list of computer classes. And I'm going to point this over to a brand new screen. I'm calling this com. Com base. There's going to be a screen that we create in a moment with an ID COM Base 101. I would create a different screen later for COM Base 201. All of that. I want to add an animation here also. We've had perhaps the flip <coughs> animation for the nav bar, but I want a different animation here. 
The flip animation is the same for all of my navbar links. It should be the same because the concept is I'm navigating the navbar. I'm about to look at content that is different from the navbar. It's a brand new screen. Therefore, I can use a new animation. Data transition, slide. This is going to slide over. I'm going to need a new section with, a, with its own header and its own article. I don't want to type that over. Hopefully you have your template waiting for you at the bottom that you can repurpose. At the end of your project, you left a section template that is complete, header, article, footer. We're not going to need footer actually. We'll remove it in a moment. But I'm going to copy the section that already exists and paste it above. I, I think I want to leave the, the template as the last thing always. We've got a new section based on the template. ID com bass 101. Data roll header, data position fixed, header text, COM 101. Article, I'll fill that in in a moment. I don't need the footer. This is part of my interface B, or interface 2. Interface 2 has no footer, has no nav bar. So all of this is a copy of the template with some changes, necessary changes, of course. The ID. Don't leave your ID as template anymore. You have to set that ID to the link of, of, of COM 101, whatever we call it. We have to set that link in order for that to then take us here. Just some quick content in the H1 and in the article. We don't need that footer. Check my result in the browser. <clears throat> I go to computer's screen. Notice a little difference here. As soon as we add a link to our one of our list view elements, it changes the link and it shows you there's content here to look at, something to click on. These don't have anything to click on, so they look a little different. But if I then click on COM 101, we should slide over. That was our animation slide. And then dead end. I don't have a way to get back. I'm not going to rely on the back button of the browser. Most you might you might when you get to a device, you might not have a back button. Android apps Android devices have a back button. iOS devices don't. So I have a back button in the browser, which we cannot assume there, that will exist in the device. We need to put a back button in COM 101, because right now there's no way to go back. We'll fix that in a moment. But the idea is we've got a link that is active. We've got an animation slide. It clicks to go to a brand new section of content.
slides over. Well, in order for us to be able to go back, there is a jQuery mobile data role, data element, that will let us add a very simple back button to go back one, one screen. That's all we need. We go look at COM 101, we're done, we want to go back. We don't need a very complex menu or anything like that. So inside of the header, we have data role header, data position fixed. If we add one more thing here, data, this one's a funny one, data dash add dash back dash btn equals true. That creates, the, the sole purpose of that is to create a simple back button. Well, all of that is a shortcut which creates a button with an icon, with some text, and with the functionality to go back. That's its main purpose, no big deal. If we were going to do that ourselves, we needed to create a link, set it as a button, set it to the right place, and this is simply data add back button btn true. You can put, you can put six so data add back button true if you save that if you refresh this make sure you refresh it before you go to that screen because there will be no back to go to if you if you refresh it in the wrong place let me show you if I'm if I'm already looking at com 101 and I refresh there you say well it didn't work what did I do wrong don't refresh it when you're in COM 101. There's no history to go back to. You have to refresh it here, and then when I go to COM 101, now there's history to go back to. We can change that text, we can change that icon if we want. Yes? Yeah, but if you want to do something, like, then maybe it's easier to go the regular way to put the value. Yes. I mean, it's a longer it's longer code, but you can okay. definitely do that. If you don't want this one, inside of the header, you can start to add your own, you know, whatever you want that to be, and make your own link and do it however you want. And name it this button. It will, it will actually become a button automatically, yeah. So we'll go back to home. And let me start adding a link there, an href. It. The reason we have that short one is because then. It's just a quick time saver. Then we can set our own icon and everything. Uh, another question, James? How would you reposition that back button on the right hand side of the wrong On the right hand side. Um, for that one, I have to double check on the jQuery mobile. There's going to be a class that we add to it, that will move it to the right. So there is a way definitely to do it, I just have to look it up. So now what we get is a simple back button that's basically interface B. Heading, content, no footer, and back. So all the info here. And that could be paragraphs, bullet points, videos, pictures, whatever. And I would do something like that for my other items as well at some point. So this one wasn't anything special. It was just a section, a page full of content. It didn't need any extra special like panel or anything. The specialness comes from we are coming from a list view. Design-wise, it's just got some different elements. Let's say, uh, if you remember back to our, our um, wireframe, we also had, uh, we wanted to display like an about screen. The about screen is going to be a pop-up. It was interface D, I think. So what I want to do is make a new button to display about information. 
I don't want to add it as a fourth button up here. I could very easily. What I want to do in the home screen is have another set of buttons to display about. Very similar to having these buttons down here. If it's similar, I'm going to copy and paste. This has created a grid with a couple buttons. We can type it the long way, but if these two buttons, if this layout works, let's save a little bit of typing. Let's go find where our catalog button is at, or our calendar. Again, instead of scrolling around to find, if I search for catalog, hopefully that takes you right away to it. I've got something in my code that is catalog, control F to find catalog. No matter the line, it'll take me to the right line. I'm just trying to get to the area so I can copy that grid. Go back to your art screen, find where that grid A is, and copy the whole grid. We're going to copy that and then paste it into the home section to reuse it. What I want here is a two-column layout with two rows and two buttons, and then I'll just change those details. I would rather spend time changing the details than typing the whole construct again. So I'm going to copy beginning and end of the grid. We'll back up to where end of home section, before the end of article, after the paragraph, paste. So copy your grid from the art screen into the home screen. It's still going to be a grid A. It's still going to have blocks A's and B's. But what's going to change is the name of the button. These are still buttons. Their links will be different. We actually don't need a second button for the moment, so I will set that to empty. The first button, it's href, we'll set that in a moment. It's still a button, different icon, uh, we'll use one called info. This is about. these empty rows. If we really, really, really want to be efficient, we can completely remove them. And I say that efficiency in that we will save all of these bytes of data that don't have to be processed. It's pretty, pretty minimal, but uh, if we want to fully uh, optimize it and such, we, if we're not going to use them, we could delete them. We may use them later. So I'll leave them until I'm ready to go like to the final phases of my app and then remove them because then I won't have to retype the code. Result is on the home screen. I've got an about button. Kind of big. So to kind of tweak it a little bit, we can actually show an icon that is simply the icon without the text. Um, that I, even without the text of info, the I by itself, I think conceptually most people will understand it. Some kind of information, something about. I might not need the word about. Sometimes we need a button, but without a word. So we have an easy way to do that. We have data roll button, data icon. We have one more thing. We have data dash icon POS position equals. And normally this is used to put the position of the text or the icon. If I put data icon pause right, this will move the icon to the right of the button. Data icon pause top will move it to the top. Data icon pause bottom 
we move it to the bottom. The default is data icon pass left, data icon position left. But curiously, this can also be used to do no text. And that will be then that there's no text positioned in this button, only the icon. The result is only an icon. Data icon POS equal to no text. If we wanted to align it to the right, well, we have the grid of left column, right column. Left column is UI block A. Right column is where you are block B. If you wanted it more to the right side, we would put it in block B. We would still need to tweak it with CSS to further move it to the right of that grid because the default will be it'll be leaning to the left of the right column. So CSS would let us fully move it to the right later. This is going to be a pop up screen, a pop up box we have an animation that works for that as well. Data transition equals pop. So that we fully have the idea that this will pop up on screen, we have an animation. So after data icon pass attribute, let's add the transition attribute. Data dash transition equals pop, P-O-P. -P. So we'll take our first break, and uh, this is not working yet. There's nowhere that it goes. The href isn't set to anything. We'll take a break, and then we will create a new section to display this information. And we further need to do a couple more things to make it look like a real pop-up. And we'll add some content there. So let's save our work. It's 7.10. We'll be back at 7.20, and then we'll go on.